Hello everyone, today we'll see about uh, linear recurrence relation. Let's define first uh, what a linear recurrence relation means. A linear recurrence relation is an equation of the form uh, like this one, uh, where for, for n greater than or equal to k, where c not n, c1 n, ckn, and fn are functions of n and uh, subscripts n and k are uh, the negative integers. Based on the definition, the recurrence relation will become linear, nonlinear, homogeneous, uh, homogeneous, constant coefficient, variable coefficient, and one recurrence relation may, may become uh, either of uh, this, may become either of this. Sometimes it may contain, um, it, may, it may hold uh, more than two um, categories. It may, it may become linear with constant coefficient, it may be homogeneous, it may, or it may become uh, nonlinear, non homogeneous, constant coefficient, or it may become linear, homogeneous, and variable coefficient. So a uh, given reconciliation may have more than two um, uh, category of reconciliations. So if the reconciliation uh, coefficients C0 and C and K are different from zero, then the recurrence relation is set to have the degree K recurrence relation. And if the coefficients uh, C0 up to CK are constants, then the recurrence relation is said to be a linear recurrence relation with constant coefficient. Otherwise, it's called uh, a recurrence relation with variable coefficient, which means that the coefficients C0 up to CK are functions of A. If the function fn is zero, then the recurrence relation is said to be linear homogeneous recurrence relation. Otherwise, which means that if fn is different from zero, then the recurrence relation is said to be non homogeneous recurrence relation. And um, the other definition is the recurrence relation is said to be non linear. Uh, recurrence relation, relation is said to be non linear if there is a product of two numeric functions or at least one term has a power greater than one. If at least one term has a power greater than one, then that recurrence relation is said to be a nonlinear recurrence relation. Let's see an example for these uh, uh, definitions. For example, the first, you can look at the first example. You can see that it's linear, and you can see the coefficients are constant, and you get this one. Fn is zero, therefore, and it's also, it has a degree two, it's a degree two recurrence relation. So linear, homogeneous, constant, coefficient, a degree two. The second example is, you can see that uh, there is no power greater than two, and there is no product of two numeric functions, so it's linear, uh, the coefficients are uh, constant, and uh, Fn is not uh, zero, so that it is non-homogeneous, so it's linear, non-homogeneous, constant coefficient and its degree is two. In the set example, you can see, and here you can see this one, uh, there is no power or product of uh, the terms, and you can see the coefficients are variable, and the function of n is zero, therefore it's linear, homogeneous, variable coefficient, and it's degree two. In the set, the fourth example, uh, you can see the fourth example here, a, um, uh, the, the, there is no product of uh, terms, or uh, the, the, anything, there is no any term which has greater than two, um, greater than one, and the coefficient, so it's linear, and the coefficients are, uh, you can see, constant, and uh, Fn is different from zero, it's uh, homogeneous, and the degree of the recurrence relation is three, the degree of the recurrence relation is three. The fifth example, you can see that um, the terms of the CPN, this, this recurrence relation, uh, one term has greater than one power, and there is a product of uh, two terms of uh, the um, numeric terms of the uh, recurrence relation. So it is nonlinear. The coefficients are constant, and it's in, it's it's. Uh, uh, homogeneous since the Fn is uh, zero and the degree of the recurrence ratio is two. 
The last example you can see, it's also non-linear because it's one term, at least one term has uh, uh, greater than two power and uh, the coefficients are constant and it's non-linear, non-homogeneous, therefore non-linear, non-homogeneous, constant coefficient and degree two. The other one is a solution of a recurrence relation. A solution of a recurrence relation is a, an arbitrary function which satisfies a recurrence relation. This is this definition is an example. Given the sequence uh, an which is called n start from zero to n where n is to the power of n, then show that uh, uh, this uh, sequence satisfies the recurrence relation, this recurrence relation. So to, to, to show that uh, the sequence satisfies this recurrence relation, we substitute the sequence on the recurrence relation. And if it satisfies the recurrence relation, then it's the solution of the recurrence relation. So the, 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 the sequence is this one. Now, when you substitute this recurrence relation, a n is, you substitute here, then two times a n minus one, the a n minus one term of the sequence is two times a n minus one is this one. So two, two times uh, to the power of n times to the power of n minus one. When you uh, split this one, you'll get this, this term. You'll get this term. So two to the power of minus one is canceled by two, then you will get to the power of n, and this one is uh, a n. Hence, a n, uh, which is equal to a n, so that a n to the power of n is a solution of the recurrence relation. Another example is uh, let's see one in situ are arbitrary constants that show that uh, uh, this sequence satisfies the recurrence relation, this one. So the sequence is a n, which is equal to c1 to the power of n plus c2 to the power of n. In the recurrence relation is a n minus 7, a n minus 1 plus 10, a n minus 2, which is equal to 0. Now we have this one, a n is uh, c1 to the power of n plus c2 to the power of n, then n minus 1 is c1 to the power of n minus 1 plus c2 to the power of n minus 1. And n minus 2 is c1 to the power of n minus 2 plus c1, c2, 5 to the power of n minus uh, 2. And now substituting these terms, substituting these terms uh, is on, on, on the recurrence relation, on the recurrence relation, we get uh, the following. So substituting this one is a n term and substituting the a n minus one term on the sequence and recurrence relation and substituting the a n minus two term on the recurrence relation, we get this one. Now collecting those uh, coefficients uh, which, has, which have C1, C1, uh, you'll get this one. C1 to the power of n minus 7, C1, C1 to the power of n minus 1 plus 10, C1 to the, C to the power of n minus 1, sorry, minus 2 plus C2, by collecting C2 terms, those terms which have coefficient C2, C2 for the power of n minus 7, C2 for the power of n minus 1 plus 10, C2 for the power of n minus 2. Now, taking common C1 to the power of n minus 2, from the first, uh, from this part, taking uh, C1 to the power of uh, N minus two, from the first term, you'll get four, and from the second term, seven times uh, two, which is 14, and from the second term, you'll get 10. Plus, when taking uh, C2, five to the power of N minus two on this uh, part, taking common, you'll get C2, five to the power of uh, n minus 2, so for on, on the first term, what remains is 25, and the second term minus 7 times 5, which is 75 plus, on the last term is, you'll get 10. So adding these terms, adding the remaining terms here, you get 4 plus 10 is uh, 14 minus 10 minus 40 is 0, 25 plus 10 is 35 minus 35 is 0. So the sequence satisfies the recurrence relation, hence the given arbitrary sequence is a solution of the recurrence relation. Another good definitions in recurrence relations are uh, uh, initial or bounded conditions of the recurrence relation. So these terms, these, these values are uh, 
uh, values which are given with the recurrence relation depending on the arbitrary constants. If the arbitrary constants are two, then you, we, we may have two, we, we would have two initial conditions. If the arbitrary constant is one, we have, will have one um, uh, initial condition. So these are requirements that satisfy the recurrence relations are initial conditions. So initial conditions are conditions that satisfy the recurrence relations. And a solution involving many arbitrary constants uh, as the order of the relation is a general solution. So arbitrary, uh, the number of arbitrary constants depends on the order of the solution. If the order of the, the recurrence relation is uh, two, we have uh, two arbitrary constants. If the order of the recurrence relation is one, uh, the, we have uh, one arbitrary the so solution of that recurrence relation will have one arbitrary, cons, uh, arbitrary, arbitrary constant. So if the, the order of the recurrence relation is three, then the solution of the recurrence relation uh, will have the three arbitrary constants. So um, in general, the solution involving these arbitrary constants is set to be the general solution of the recurrence relation. And uh, any solution obtained from the general solution by assigning the particular values to one or more arbitrary constants is called, is called, is called uh, uh, a particular solution of the recurrence relation. So substitute those initial conditions on the uh, solution, the general solution of the recurrence relation with the uh, arbitrary constants. And uh, so substituting those arbitrary constants will uh, obtain the particular solution of the recurrence relation. For example, from the above example, uh, we, 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 we proved that n, which is equal to one to the power of n plus c to five to the power of n is a general solution for the recurrence relation, this one, then given two initial conditions, given two initial conditions, A0 is equal to N and A1 is equal to 41, uh, what would be the particular solution for this uh, recurrence relation? So substituting N is equal to zero and N is equal to one on the solution on the sequence, 10 which is equal to A0 is equal to C1 to the power of uh, zero plus C2 to five to the power of zero, which is equal to C1 plus C2. And substituting N is equal to one, 41, which is equal to A1, which is equal to C1 to the power of one plus C2 to five to the power of one, which is equal to two times C1 plus five times C2. So we have two equations. We obtain two equations. So solving these two equations simultaneously or by substitution, we get a solution to C1, the solution for that constant C1 and C2. So from the first equation, we get C1, which is, which is equal to 10 minus C2, and substituting this C1 on the second equation here, we get um, the value of C2. So substituting C1, 41 is equal to two times 10 minus C2 plus five C2, which is equal to minus uh, two C2 plus five C2 plus 20, which is, 3C2 plus 20, so 41 which is equal to 3C2 plus 20. And rearranging this one, we get 7C2 which is equal to 21, so which implies C2 is seven. And uh, we know that C1 is 10 minus C2, so uh, substituting seven, 10 minus seven, we get C1 is seven. Therefore, uh, An which is equal to three times to the power of n plus seven times five to the power of n, five to the power of n is a particular solution to the uh, recurrence relation. To the recurrence relation. So on the next section, we will see the solution of uh, uh, how to find the solution of the recurrence relations of uh, um, uh, given recurrence relation.